guys, uh, in this video we're going to continue using FXGL and we'll be building a very simple um, Geometry Wars clone. I've uh, wanted to do this uh, for a while, but now that we have FXGL it's much easier to do this uh, using this gaming library. So if you haven't um, set it up, then go to one of the previous tutorials where we do that. Or if you're uh, familiar with um, adding custom libraries um, to build path, which is basically um, right-click properties, build path, and adding a jar file, then do that instead. So you can download it from the link, um, which will be in the video description. And yeah, that's it. Um, so today's tutorial is number 20. Create a package for this tutorial, as always. Um, name it FXGL, name the class FXGL Wars app, and um, yeah, we'll continue from there. So these are the imports for today, and the code is just under 180 lines, so it's not bad. We're gonna have those um, fields, uh, last time enemy spawned, last time shot, and before actually we do that, um, short demo. So this is what we're going to have. This is the finished product. It is very simple but has the basics of a um, Giant Rewards game. So you have enemies floating around um, going after you and you're able to shoot them. So when you shoot them you get points which are here. If the enemy hits you then he dies but the points um, are the thousand points is subtracted from your score. So yeah, that's that. Okay, we're using FXGL 0.004, so it should, uh, yeah, it is there. Um, um, yeah, so last time any spawned, last time shot, these are the values to keep track of um, the time, basically, when we did a certain action. Integer property score to keep our score, um, reference to our player, and um, a random object to generate random values. So the first thing we need to have obviously the uh, starting point so just do this as always. Um, then in its settings pretty straightforward um, we set width height of the um, window pane rather than window frame. Um, set title to the window and version of the application these are these don't really matter um, in in it game we have yeah that so we we've created our player instance um, we initialized it now we are going to position the player so that's set X and Y use physics means that this um, object is now able to participate in collision detection, which we will need later. Um, this is basically the graphics of our player, so rectangle 40 by 40, and we set color to the rectangle blue. Finally, we set the graphics um, for a player. And then we add player to the list of entities. If you don't do that, then you won't see the player and basically the player won't be a part of the game. Uh, these four things are the um, key press bindings for uh, keyboard control. So you have WASD as always and when this particular um, key is pressed then this will be executed. And because it's a key press binding <coughs> as opposed to um, key type binding this will always be executed as long as um, this key is pressed. So W moves the uh, player up, um, S down, A left, D right, so it should be pretty straightforward. Translate basically means move. Um, add collision handler between the type player and between the type enemy. And these will be these objects will be passed in this particular order, depending on how you specify the types or the order of types. And when there is a collection a collision between player and enemy, we set property alive of enemy to false. 
and we subtract a thousand uh, points from the score. When there is a collision between bullet and enemy, um, we set both of them um, not alive or dead so that they could be cleaned up and so basically to make them invisible um, and score set just add uh, 100 points. User interface is just single thing. We're going to have text, um, which is this here score. So when you hit enemies, you get points. Uh, translate X um, thousand and one hundred, so it's top right corner. And translate white fifty. Then bind the text property of um, text to score. So whenever the score changes, the text property of our um, object will uh, change automatically. And finally, we add this um, UI object to the list of children of UI root. An update method is called um, 60 times a second. So this is where the main um, update tick happens. We first of all get entities, enemy and bullet. And we'll obtain stream to them. We filter um, the stream by saying if the property um, if the property alive um, is false. So we want basically to collect all entities within the stream um, whose alive property is false. Basically, all dead objects. And for each dead object, we remove the entity. Um, now this is the um, thing that spawns our enemies. If now minus the last time's enemy spawned is greater than one, greater or equal um, to one second, and spawn an enemy, um, you can modify this value to anything you want. Um, so 0 0.5 would mean half a second, two would mean two seconds, and so on. Uh, we spawn enemy and then we reassign our last time enemy spawn to now. So that whenever um, this check happens, it's always sort of um, correct. Then this is the shooting part. If mouse, um, by the way, mouse object um, comes from the game application that we extended. So if you want to check the state of mouse, um, for its x, y coordinates or um, left and right buttons, then you can do this. So mouse left pressed means if the mouse, if the left uh, button of the mouse is pressed, and uh, we have at least a quarter of a second difference between the um, last time shot and now, then we spawn bullet, which is equivalent to shoot, and we reassign the last time shot. So um, there are just two methods left. So spawn enemy is entity, new entity. This is the type. Make sure that you don't misspell it because the um, coding detection otherwise will not work and nothing will work basically. Uh, you might want to create a constant string saying this is my type and use the um, constant instead, instead of the uh, li um, string literal. Um, send translate x and y to random um, on the screen. Depending on how large your screen is, you might want to change those values. And also uh, in the settings. Set use physics for collision detection. Cir um, circle is the graphics for our um, enemy. So red circles. Um, circle, new circle 20, this is the radius of circle, so basically it gives us uh, uh, the circle which is pretty much as big as our rectangle, 40 units, um, because the diameter will be 40. Circle, set fill, it basically set color to red, set graphics of the enemy to circle, set property of enemy alive to true, um, because when we just created uh, an object it will be true, and set property allows you to set um, custom properties for an entity. 
enemy at control. Uh, control is basically like the behavior um, in the entity component system um, for games. That's uh, something that's commonly used. Um, so this code essentially defines how your player or how your entity is going to act. Um, so we define velocity, um, last time change velocity. And then on the update, this now is equivalent to now that's called in the main update loop. So basically these loops are um, called concurrently. Uh, then we have now minus last time change velocity. So if uh, we change velocity and the difference is um, more or equal to half a second, then we obtain a new velocity. So our velocity essentially depends on where the player is. So new point 2D, although it is a point 2D, it, um, the semantics um, of a vector still apply. So you can think of it as a um, 2D vector um, if you did math. So player get translate x and get translate y are the x, y of our um, vector or initially. Then we subtract from that vector the um, entity get translate x, get translate y to obtain the um, vector from point where the player is and from point where the entity is. We then normalize it to obtain a unit vector uh, of length 1 and then we multiply it by the speed of um, at which we want the object to move. So this, if we increase that to 5, you'll see that um, enemies will move much faster. And hence the game is more complex or more difficult to play. Um, so yeah. Last time change velocity now, again, we do the same trick with time um, and if not within this if statement just translate um, using the velocity um, x and y. Finally we've created the entity um, so we've created the entity we set all its properties we added control to it and we add uh, it to the list of entities of the root. So spawn bullet is where we should um, so entity bullet um, type bullet translate x where we position the bullet is essentially the center of player so we get translate x and y and add 20 which is half of width and height of the player we set use physics for equation detection set property alive uh, we obtain the vector because uh, we do that outside of the control because we don't really need to do this all the time because the uh, trajectory, trajectory of a uh, bullet doesn't change um, depending on time, just moves in one direction at, um, when it shot, when it was shot. So you do the same thing, we get uh, X and Y of the mouse, subtract where the bullet currently is, we then normalize it and multiply by the speed of the entity, which is 8. You might want to increase the value. So both set property vector um, basically velocity. Um, we do that so that we can then obtain this in the control. So the idea is that this control could be a class as opposed to uh, being anonymous class. So it could be um, something like bullet control and be in a completely different file. Uh, this stuff is basically to make sure that we've rotated the object correctly because if you look at the game the bullet will change its rotation depending on where we're shooting it at and um, this little formula will do this for you um, don't worry too much about it but if you are interested you can go to one of the early um, videos on this channel and I think it's called sprite rotation or something um, so yeah, add control, new control, this is the behavior of a bullet or um, how it moves or what it does. So we obtain velocity from a property entity. Entity is the thing or the bullet um, that will be passed back on update. So it is like a double callback. 
we add control to um, bullet and then this entity is the bullet that is being passed. So if you want to, you could have created a single instance as opposed to creating new control for every single bullet. Um, you obtain vector, which is this uh, object that we assigned um, to our bullet. We then translate entity by this uh, velocity. And this is just a simple check where to um, to destroy our bullet because it went um, so beyond our boundaries or screen boundaries. So less than zero means it's to the left, or y less than zero means um, so to it went to um, or beyond top, and it will then be destroyed. Otherwise, you'll have too many objects, um, and you don't want that. Finally, the graphics. Our bullet is represented by a rectangle of width um, 10 and height 1, color black, and yeah, that's it. So, um, in this tutorial we covered how to do a uh, very simple, extremely simple uh, version of um, Geometry Wars. You could extend uh, this um, application by adding, um, well you could do um, boundaries check for a player for example because um, currently he can go away and go beyond the screen boundaries. You could add different types of enemies like ones who pursue you and the others um, which move randomly but uh, the ones are, are, who are chasing you will get you more points or something. And also, when enemy hits you, you might respawn as opposed to just getting um, your points decreased. There are a lot of things that could be done. And in the previous tutorial, we did um, research loading like assets, uh, like textures and um, audio using FXGL. So you might want to sort of um, add that that to that as well. So you'll have. Um, texture graphics as opposed to just um, shape graphics. Um, and yeah, um, thanks for watching.